Reprise de débois, uh, uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, this morning, I'm pleased to be uh, sharing my time with the Honourable Member for Brampton East. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to have the opportunity today to speak on the subject of Bill C-13, legislation that will, as Canada is uh, already largely compliant, make few legislative changes needed to bring us into full compliance with the World Trade Organization's Agreement on Trade Facilitation. The 2015 speech from the throne, Madam Speaker, and the Prime Minister's priorities are clear. This government is focused on creating opportunities by pursuing policies that create growth and ensuring that growth produces tangible results for all. The agreement on trade facilitation, concluded at the WTO Ministerial Conference in December 2013, is the first multilateral agreement concluded since the creation of the World Trade Organization, reinforcing the important role of the WTO as a negotiating forum for global trade rules. The agreement provides for the modernization and simplification of customs and border procedures by all WTO members. Now, Canada played a key role in the negotiation of the TFA and ratification would demonstrate Canada's support for the agreement and the WTO. The TFA supports the government's efforts to promote trade and development and provides another vehicle to increase prosperity in developing countries. All WTO members agreed to the conclusion of the negotiations on the agreement on trade facilitation at the December 2013 WTO Ministerial Conference, and all WTO members will become parties once they ratify the agreement. Multilateral trade negotiations can sometimes be difficult to relate to the day-to-day -day workings of business. But the TFA, Madam Speaker, isn't a theoretical agreement. It's about making trade work better for everyone. And it's important that Canada move to quickly ratify the TFA. For traders, the TFA, Madam Speaker, will ensure that faster, simpler, and more predictable cross-border trade, which translates into lower costs. The TFA's provisions will apply to trade in all goods between WTO members. Now, the WTO estimates full implementation of the agreement on trade facilitation by WTO members could boost global merchandise exports, and this has been alluded to several times by my honourable colleagues on both sides of the aisle, by up to $1 trillion, including up to $730 billion, Madam Speaker, in export opportunities accruing to developing countries, and decrease trade costs for WTO members by an average of 14%, including an average of nearly 17% for least developed countries. The implementation, Madam Speaker, of the TFA will cut red tape, enhance the predictability of trade, and reduce the costs and delays of trading at international borders for Canadian exports. In fact, the WTO estimates that the TFA will reduce trade costs with it averaging over 14%, as I said, globally, including 17% for least developed countries. As we know, Madam Speaker, lowering, lowering trade costs can increase trade, contribute to higher national income, and indeed reduce poverty. It can drive the growing participation of developing nations in small and medium-sized enterprises in the world economy. And in fact, countries that do more to lower trade costs, Madam Speaker, for instance, by improving logistics, tend to grow more rapidly. Uh, I'd like to just reflect on an experience that I had. I spent uh, many years working in East Africa, and I was able to see how the East African th re uh, Union, through trade negotiations, through opening up trade, were able to grow their economies significantly. And while I was there, I was able to see significant growth of over 10% in Uganda alone for the period that I was working there, which allowed that government to implement for the first time free primary education for uh, their youth. All to say, this can have a very significant impact not only on Canadian small and medium-sized enter enterprises and Canadian business, Madam Speaker, but also on developing countries, particularly those in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, Canada's provided over $65 million in funding, uh, Madam Speaker, for trade facilitation assistance to developing countries since 2008. Canada's also partnered with Trademark East Africa, contributing $12 million to the Integrated Border Management Project, and has provided $2 million, Madam Speaker, in funding for the World, uh, Bank's, uh, World Bank's Trade Facilitation Support Program, launched in 2014 to facilitate the implementation 
of the TFA. Canada is also, it's worth noting, a founding donor to the Global Alliance for Trade Facilitation, a public-private platform that will support the TFA implementation efforts of developing countries by leveraging private sector expertise, leadership, and resources to achieve commercially meaningful reforms all around the world. And Canada is contributing, Madam Speaker, $10 million to the Global Alliance for Trade Facilitation over seven years from 2015 to 2022. Now, these lower trade costs, Madam Speaker, along with enhanced timelines and predictability in the delivery of intermediate goods, will drive growing participation by small and medium-sized enterprises in world trade as the high costs of international trade currently disproportionately affect SMEs as well as developing nations. SMEs will be better positioned to export their goods once the TFA uh, is ratified. Now, helping SMEs reduce trading costs, Madam Speaker, as many in this House will agree, will also benefit women in developing countries. As the World Bank estimates that 8 to 10 million SMEs in developing world have at least one female owner. Now, as we all know, uh, studies have come out in recent years to show just what kind of an impact, Madam Speaker, investments in women can have all around the world, particularly in developing nations. Uh, we're talking about um, economic growth, uh, which has seen to skyrocket when there are significant investment in, uh, in women and empowering women to uh, get involved in enterprise and become business owners. We're talking about reducing child mortality rates, increasing education rates. Um, we're talking about innovation that is strengthened. So all to say, this investment will have, uh, this change, this ratification will have significant impacts, for, not just for Canada, but also for developing nations. Now, while the TFA's provisions complement those uh, found in Canada's free trade agreement, uh, trade facilitation chapters, the agreement addresses a broader range of trade facilitation measures, since the TFA is specialized agreement that reflects the more diverse priorities of all WTO members, Madam Speaker. Trade facilitation provisions in Canada's free trade agreement have to date focused on Canada's priorities including transparency, release of goods, risk management, and the advanced issuance of decisions on cla uh, tariff classifications. These interests are well reflected in the TFA. And because they will apply to all ratifying WTO members, they will serve to advance Canada's interests with countries with which it does not have an FTA. The Agreement on Fair Trade Facilitation will enter into force when two-thirds of the members, two-thirds, Madam Speaker, have completed their domestic ratification procedures and submitted their instrument of acceptance to the WTO. As of today, 92 of the required members have ratified the agreement on trade facilitation. And while there's no specific deadline for WTO members to ratify the agreement, G20 leaders committed to ratifying this agreement by the end of 2016 and have called on all G, uh, WTO members to do the same at the G20 Leader Summit in Hangzhou, China in September of 2016. Our government, Madam Speaker, in short, is committed to ratifying this agreement as soon as possible, and we encourage all members on both sides of the aisle to do the same. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker.